Well, to do digital transactions, first we need to understand that there are different types of digital transactions, starting from the most basic ones, which would be doing from your credit card or debit card, till there, is, there are multiple ways to send money through your mobile wallets, or now you have ways using UPI, which is enabling things like WhatsApp or uh, Google Pay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can also do online net banking transactions. So there are there's like this universe of digital transactions that today Indians can uh, you know can, can can do in order to send money from their account to somebody else's account or ask for money from somebody else. While you do that, there is every single way has its own risk which is involved. The good news is that there are different kinds of mechanisms which are fairly more secured and there the limits are fairly higher. So if you would have a net banking transaction which would have a limit of a couple of lakh rupees uh, out there, you know, the time to add the beneficiary, the time to go ahead and, 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 and uh, get the beneficiary approved online would be, would be a little more versus a Bhim by Aadhaar that uh, or, uh, you know, Aadhaar by Bhim transaction that you would be doing where the upper limit of each transaction is 2000 rupees. So, so, you know, while these systems have been designed for the convenience of the masses, at the same time a lot of security concerns have been thought through in a very, very detailed way and uh, what I can tell you is that there are multiple, there are, there are multiple kinds of frauds that happen but in terms of the, the, the absolute quantity of digital transaction frauds that happen in India versus even developed countries like the United States or Eastern European countries, Western European countries countries, uh, India India is, is very, very low on those ranks and the number of frauds that happen in the US are far, far higher versus that in India. So I think we are in a very good situation when it comes to, uh, you know, the frauds in which are online and both from a technological and from a policy and regulatory perspective, we are pretty high up there. Obviously, there are multiple ways in which you can secure your transactions, but, uh, but, but, but that's where we are today. Today, when you talk about a social media account, which is almost becoming an identity of yourself in the virtual world, uh, how safe it is, again, can be divided into two parts. Vulnerabilities that exist on the side of social media websites. Secondly, the vulnerabilities that potentially exist at the side of users, which use those social media accounts. Majority of the hacks really happen on the second side, which is the users using the social media account and their webs, their, their computers getting hacked, you have key loggers using which people would monitor your keystrokes, you have Trojan horses, uh, which will be malwares which would be on your system which is trying to capture everything you're doing. Uh, you'd have phishing pages where you would go ahead and provide your information. But these are more on the user side and I would say majority, a very high majority, I would say more than 95% of the hacks happen on that side. So that's the user side of it. The, the minority would be the vulnerabilities that lie on the social media accounts website. As an example, with the Facebook hack that happened two weeks back, there was a vulnerability at the code level of Facebook.com using which a hacker was able to exploit the vulnerability using which he could capture the session cookies or session tokens and he could impersonate any user that he was able to see uh, through that option called view as which comes on Facebook and, and basically see things like the last 10 searched things on the search bar, the last 10 checked in places and of course the personal details which are commonly available on the, on, on the profile page of individuals. But such hacks are very, very rare. They do not happen very frequently and there is not much that a user can do when a social media platform itself gets hacked. The, the most common way by which hackers would attack and steal information would be something called, you know, spear phishing. So if I were to go ahead and attack a lot of people or individual set of people, I would find out the common things that would excite this group of people and then would send them targeted emails which would come from alleged sources which the receiver would trust 
as a result the probability of opening that email and clicking on a link which I want him to click on goes high and when he clicks on the link you are basically redirected to a page which looks almost like that of the original website and when that's the case you are able to go ahead and, and uh, try to manipulate him to enter his password uh, because he would think uh, <coughs> the original website is asking for the password and when that's the case you are you're, you're scammed and of course it's a phishing attack a classic phishing attack uh, I would say majorly a lot of attacks starting start from these emails and uh, <coughs> of course they take to tend or, or tend to take a, a different route depending on the kind of thing being attacked or the target or the even even the groups of hackers which are trying to attack something finding that out is fairly simple on the internet there is this there are a couple of platforms actually one of my favorite is something called the web of trust it's called wot uh, web of trust is basically this accumulation of list of websites which are there which you can easily go to and find out whether the URL of the website that you're going to is trusted or not. So if you find that out, you can easily get to know that, you know, yeah, this is a website which is a genuine website which has a reputation and a credibility which is longing or has been lasting for a while now. And if there's a new website or somebody is scamming a website, it will immediately tell you that, hey, this looks like something fishy uh, and, and, and do not go ahead and give your credentials out there. So there are multiple things that individuals can do. I can give you a long list of technical controls which I strongly believe everybody should be following, starting from having a two-factor authentication in your email accounts, making sure that your antiviruses, firewall signatures, and most importantly, your operating system signatures are updated on a daily basis, making sure that you're not, you know, storing, uh, you know, your passwords on, on, on uh, yellow uh, sticky notes which are posted on your computer, uh, and so on and so forth. But the long list of technical controls that I can give you, uh, myself being from the security industry, would know multiple ways to evade the same. So what is that one recommendation that I would have for everybody would not be a technical control, but would be more of a psychological control, where if you assume everything that you're doing on the internet is hackable and will come out on the internet at some point or the other. It doesn't matter if you're writing a private email to a friend of yours or sending a snap picture to some of some other friend of yours. You thinking that that is private is the problem and can lead to, 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 to you being embarrassed in the future. And if you only create content which you know can potentially come out in the future, I think that is the ultimate safeguard that you can have um, in order to ensure that your, 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 you and your data is fairly protected on the cyberspace. So I would say that uh, uh, I, I would say that India uh, ranks uh, you know fairly low in the in the in the in the category of countries where the number of financial frauds on digital platforms happen. I mean, if I were to compare this with North America, uh, you know, the United States has almost eight times more frauds that happen in terms of financial credit cards or debit cards versus that of India. So I would say we are in a good shape, uh, especially considering Reserve Bank of India has been very, very hard on certain guidelines, which was bought in almost half a decade back. Uh, uh, you know, things like, you know, mandating two-factor authentication, mandating, uh, you know, certain standards and compliances that banks in India have to follow for their security. But the other side, which I would say that uh, you need to be worried about and you need to ensure that, um, you know, that, that, that your financial frauds are not, uh, or financial records of your credit and debit cards do not go out in the hands of wrong people, are actually follow a different methodology of giving your credit or debit card numbers. So there are, for example, most of the leading banks in India provide you with a facility called net safe banking, which basically means you can go to their website and, and you can register a virtual credit card 
uh, which will only be valid for a particular amount. Uh, so if you're shopping on a particular e-commerce website that you trust, I don't see a problem out there in giving out your actual credit card. And mind you, do not give out a credit card which has a lot of limit. You should actually curtail your limits to whatever possible. You want a five lakh rupee limit, go with five credit cards of a lakh rupee limit rather than having one with five. But coming back, uh, if it's a website like a flipkart.com or an amazon.com, they are fairly high up there when it comes to their uh, uh, security practices and I would not be extremely worried in providing my credit card details out there but on the other side if there is a new e-commerce website that I have not heard of but that has brilliant stuff that I want to buy from I would not go and give out my primary credit card number I would go to my bank's website find out uh, something called net safe banking where they can give me a virtual credit card number which is a one-time use credit card number and you can cap the value of uh, of the credit card transaction transaction that can happen in the one time also, uh, basically eliminating in, in every way possible a uh, uh, possibility of your actual credit card being attacked uh, uh, while, you, while you are able to successfully go ahead and do the transaction. Well, websites never save passwords. Passwords are always saved either on your browser or you have a local keychain which is on the laptop itself. So what you're asking is, do we never save passwords out there? I would actually say the contrary. If you use a very strong password manager, because it is not possible for individuals to remember complex passwords that every website asks you for. So I would go to the extreme of saying, stop having passwords, start having pass phrases because you can actually have passwords now in most websites as long as 20, 25, 30 characters. And you don't need to remember those passwords. Save all those passwords in one common vault. There are multiple, you know, last pass and uh, Apple has something called Apple Keychain that you can use, which I personally use also. So you use passwords which even you can't remember and then you consolidate all of that into an Apple Keychain and that's just one password which you should have very complex and you should not be, uh, so, so that it's not easy to brute force or it's not easy to guess basically. Um, so it's better to remember one password of a keychain rather than trying to remember 25 passwords, which in most cases is not possible for most of us. So I would, I would say, I would say we, should, we should definitely save our passwords out there, but as an extension to your questions, you must log out every time that you come out from your social media website or, or things like that, or at least refresh your cookies every once in a while, even your, in your own laptops. When I say refresh your cookies, it simply means log out and log in again. So then the session variable gets refreshed. And when a Facebook hack happens and somebody has stolen your cookies of the last session, uh, even if he has your cookies, he will not be able to log in because the previous session's cookies were already expired and flushed out.